What is up, YouTube? It's your boy Brent Sibley, Miami, Miami Lawyer Daddy back here. <clears throat> I am done reviewing and researching the rest of the information that we know as of now and soaking up all the different viewpoints from around the poker world. And I still don't have a hard conclusion, but I am ready to at least put my record, put my opinion on the record. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and say that at the end, although it'll be pretty obvious as we go through some of this stuff here. So the main people that have been, you know, pushing, uh, their viewpoints out into the public have been obviously Joey Ingram and he's been getting a lot of people on his, uh, podcast, whatever you want to call it, his live streams. And then of course you have Doug Polk and you have Daniel Negron talking about it. You have everybody pretty much talking about it a little bit, but, um, I pretty much want to say what I think. Well, first of all, I want to say that there's something really interesting that I want to go through with regard to the misreading. I think the, the misreading allegations and backtracking and then rebacktracking, whatever you want to call it, are, are a big piece of what's going on. And then giving the money is also a big piece. Um, but um, first, I want to say that. The default, like a lot of po poker players are generally math people. So the default should be that cheating is, is very difficult, especially in a place like Hustler where they take your devices, there's cameras everywhere, everything's being filmed, the audio is being recorded. Uh, it's for sure if like if it's coin flip like a genuine coin flip and there's evidence that's not conclusive either way basic logic will lead you to believe that there was not cheating because it's really difficult to cheat now if this was a hand that went down in the hialeah magic city casino and it was a coin flip as to whether or not there was cheating then i would say that it's exact opposite there's probably cheating because that place is a uh, ripe for cheating. They speak different languages at the table. They all know each other. There's no cameras. It's a complete shit show and blah, 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 blah. So with that being said, I think, and maybe I'm biased for thinking that, but that's what I believe. And I think a lot of people believe the same thing as me. So the baseline is going to be that it's less likely that there's cheating, all else being equal, because it's a highly monitor, high, highly monitored, highly regulated environment. So considering we don't have any conclusive evidence at all. Nobody can dispute that. Even the people that are in the 90% camp are forced to be in the 90% camp, not the 100% camp, because there's no conclusive evidence. So that's the baseline positioning. Um, the most, the biggest thing I think that we need to talk about first is the misreading of the hand. So we all know that the, she does a really bad job of explaining anything, which at first I thought was, I pointed toward indication of guilt, but after thinking about it and after looking more of the research about the days and the weeks before and the way she thinks about poker and the way she talks about poker, I don't think that her word salad explanations are indicative of much. In fact, I think that they probably mean that she's just not that capable of expressing her thoughts with regard to poker that eloquently, which generally is an indication that the person who can't speak that eloquently is not thinking that clearly. And that's what a lot of people seem to think. And I'm, I, I tend to give her credit, I guess you could say, by not giving her credit. So she's new to the game and she's been getting bluffed a lot and she just wanted to take a stand and she can't really explain her thoughts that much. So with regard, so we know that an hour after the hand, as I talked about in the last video, she pretty much says, I thought I had Jack three. And if I had Jack four, it wouldn't have been cool. I, I would never have made that call. I don't know if that was exactly what she said, but she basically said it wouldn't have been cool if I made the call with Jack four, but I thought I had Jack three. So that's why it's cool. But if I had Jack four, it, it's just not cool. She doesn't really understand that poker is a game, it's war. Like if you make a call with the information that you have and you're right, it doesn't matter if it's cool or not. Anyway, it's a t separate topic. But so she's on the record as an hour after the hand saying that she thought she had Jack three. Um, but right here, 
this is five minutes after the hand. And I don't remember if, she, I don't know if she knows exactly what she said because she probably has like, she probably sort of blacked out because obviously everyone started staring at her and Garrett was looking at her with the death stare. So she might not even remember in this moment what she had said, but let's just go and see exactly what she said. Wow. You only that, needed one. You thought Jack High was good. That's like some spiritual like guy from out of I ran it twice because I didn't think Jack High could like, be good. Oh, like, that's like so Eric Persons like goes crazy because he's like, oh my God, he just wants to needle Garrett, I think, because he's sitting right next to him. And he's like, she called you. Garrett's like asking her, how could you call me? Because Garrett's like, oh my God, I got cheated. What the hell just happened? Like, can you explain yourself, please? And Eric just chimes in. She called you because she knew Jack High was good. And then she goes... Uh, well, that's why I knew I had to run it twice because I didn't think Jack High was good. So she's clearly acknowledging that she called with Jack High. Let's just watch it again with a little more context. Eric's taunting everybody. Okay, it happened. There's some reason you did it. There's some reason you did it. There's multiple reasons. Multiple reasons. Oh, you only needed one. You thought Jack High was good. That's like some spiritual like guy from outer space. I ran it twice because I didn't think your Jack High could like, be good. Oh, like, that is like you have been most 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 Okay, so she goes, no, I ran it twice because I didn't think Jack High could be good. So obviously it's, it's really, you can't use like too much logic with the situation because she for sure, like this is for sure, like even uh, Mike X who's sitting two to her left in the four seat tweeted before the game, he goes, I can't, something along the lines of, uh, I can't wait to play tonight with Robbie. I can't wait her to see her make another big call. So, and she's been tweeting about, I'm not playing nice anymore in the sandbox, blah, blah, blah. So it's like 100% clear, like she has a history of talking about being bullied at the table, not necessarily like phys not physically, but with people's words, but like she knows that she's being over bluffed. She can't like necessarily express it as like, oh, I'm being over bluffed. The frequency of people bluffing me is too high. It's not GTO. She doesn't say that, but like her like statement probably would be something along the lines of men like to bluff me a lot, too much maybe, something along those lines. So she's like on the record, it's established that she is looking to take a stand. So basically she's looking to make hero calls. Uh, that's well established. That's not in dispute. Like anyone who tries to dispute that is just out of their mind. So she comes into this game trying to make hero calls. Like, that's her mindset. I don't know if Garrett had factored that in. Um, Garrett's such a crusher that he still probably wouldn't ever think that, you know, someone would make a call like this and he could just go all in. But the other point is that she says, okay, I knew I needed to run it twice because I didn't think Jack High could be good. In her mind, not realizing that when you like, it's not a kind of a situation, and this is kind of analysis that is for more of the hardcore poker people, but that's who's pretty much paying attention to these videos. It's not this kind of situation where she's getting good pot odds, and if she's flipping, she's incentivized later. If, she, if you look at all the different hands that she could be up against, and some of them are flips, and some of them she's crushed, she's getting incentivized to call. She's facing such a big bet she basically needs to be right like all the time, which is why everybody's like so baffled by the situation. So when she says that she called, she's basically saying here, I called like thinking that I'm behind and that I need to hit. So like, that's what she says. I, I ran it twice because I didn't think I was good. Meaning like she's up against like ace queen. So she's calling with, in her mind, basically saying she's calling with six outs um, but she's calling her day. She is, she, she doesn't have anywhere, anywhere near close to the right odds to call, but that's what she's thinking. And I think it's a very reasonable conclusion to say that she 
could be thinking that and saying, oh, well, he's bluffing. I get over bluffed. I came today to make a stand and I'm going to make my stand here. And in her mind, she called with six outs. You know, he has he has an ace or he has clubs uh, and her outs and she has six outs and she needs to hit. Um, she might have thought maybe once in a while, if she even got this far in the analysis, that maybe once in a while she's good. Uh, but she says she doesn't think she's good. So um, another factor is like Daniel Negreanu talks about in his videos that he's done a lot of coaching with people like in her skill level in the one to two years of experience range. And when they're faced with a big decision, they basically explain their decision the exact same way that she does. Which I, upon further like thinking about it, and I've and I've attended some like boot camps, not as like like as an event organizer with poker players um, back when I used to manage Vanessa Russo. Um, I've seen people trying to explain their logical thinking or their decision making, and it sounds a lot like what Robbie said. So, um, yeah. And then finally, like the Doug Polk stuff. I just. All the stuff that he's pointing out, like with the, okay, so like the shaking, like she's about to, she's considering making the most insane hero call in the history of the world. Like, of course she should be shaking. She should absolutely be shaking. She should be twitching. She should be fiddling with her fingers. That's all completely normal. Anybody in her position would be doing the same thing. That means nothing. The object in her hip, um, yeah, there's like maybe if you're like looking really hard to for, and you're clinging on to find something, it does look suspicious. But that is basically like the best piece of evidence that like would lead to believe. And I'm sure that she's going to have an explanation for that. I mean, on Twitter so far, she said it was her hip. And that doesn't like look like a hip. It looks pretty square, like a man-made object. Um, and then this like vibrating thing with the abdomen sucking in, I think that's like way far from conclusive. It's it's totally a reach. It's like you're begging to try and find something. So at this point, I think basically the conclusions is that she made an insane hero call and it's somewhere along the lines of she either thought she was good or she thought he was bluffing and she was okay with, with putting the rest of the money in with six outs. It's one of the two, or it's kind of like a mix of that, because in her mind, it doesn't, the way she's thinking, it doesn't need to be one of the two. It could kind of just be a little bit of everything. I think that's the best way to summarize that. And then I think later, it could be someone told her uh, that, you know, it could be the conversation that they had in the alleyway where Ryan was like millions of people are going to see this and she might have thought oh man everyone's going to think i'm retarded because i just called a hundred thousand dollars with jack high so she said well maybe i could just pretend that i had jack three which will be like less offensive to garrett and the poker world and it's a plausible theory and at the time she didn't realize that she had made statements right after the hand which revealed her state of mind at the time that admitting that she called with Jack High. So I think she was extremely flustered. I think she felt like it was a bluff. She didn't have to go through the analysis of whether or not Jack High was good or whether it could just be live. She might not even know the difference between something being good or being live. In her mind, it's like, there's still a card to come, blah, blah, blah. So, sorry, my kid is screaming in the background. But basically, I think that it's fair to say my conclusion is I strongly believe that she didn't cheat. I think this is just like a fluke hand in history. I think she took a stand. Um, it's crazy that the board ran out twice in her favor. Uh, I think that if it ran out in Garrett's favor, if they chopped, people would have been like, oh my God, I can't believe it. Like it, it would make her look much less guilty. The fact that it ran out twice in her favor makes people think, oh, she knew what was coming. Um, so if you take that away and they wind up chopping or she winds up losing, people would be like, oh my God, she's just dumb. I cannot believe she would make that call. Um, so it's a little bit of confirmation bias there. I think that's it. I think it's like a whole much ado about nothing. Um, I... I'm not sure whether or not Garrett's going to give the money back. Um, 
if enough people talk to him and the investigation leads to absolutely no evidence whatsoever, he seems like the kind of guy that would give it back. I think he'll realize that, I think he'll pretty much come to the same conclusions. Of course, unless some kind of evidence comes out that proves that she cheated, uh, I think it's pretty to highly unlikely at this point. Uh, I think that he'll probably wind up giving the money back because his reputation is so stellar. And I think he'll issue a, you know an apology that basically says, I was just baffled. I've never seen anything like that in my life. I was caught by off guard. I reacted in a way that many people have said is reasonable and I and I stand by it, but it is what it is. I knew I could always give the money back later, something along those lines. So that's what I think. And let me know what you guys think. That's pretty much where I'm at right now. I think Doug Polk is just looking for a story and he's just trying to be a detective. Um, I waited a while, I did a lot of research, I watched a ton of videos and commentary, and I watched all the video replays and all the evidence and everybody's analysis. I think it's highly unlikely that she cheated. It's still possible, but I think it's highly unlikely. And I'm gonna be curious to see how this plays out. Let me know what you guys think. See you guys in the next video.